Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to the SP Consys build. In this series, I'm working to create HO scale models of five locomotives that I saw in the front of a Southern Pacific freight train in 1993. This episode is going to focus on the Conrail unit, SD40 number 6283. In the last episode, I talked about making a lighting plan for a model, and I installed lighting and a speaker in the rear of my HO scale Conrail SD40 number 6283. My goals for this time are to install the front number board lights, install a cab light, and install ground lights. Conrail 6283, based on an HO scale Kato SD40, is one of the few models that I've built once and then taken apart to rebuild it better. The first time around, I replaced the original cab with a cannon part and set up the number boards to be translucent so that I could light them. I didn't actually install any lights though. I want to fix that this time. A lot of my planning when lighting a model revolves around preventing light leaks. I want each light to be completely independent with no cross-contamination of lighting effects, so to speak. In a previous episode, I painted the inside of the cab roof black, which will help to keep any LEDs inside the model from making the shell glow. Glowing diesels definitely don't look realistic. The model already has fiber optics installed for the front headlight and for the front class lights. Those are painted black to make sure that only the light from the LEDs that are supposed to light those lights makes it to the lenses. I'll need to work around these. I don't want the number board LEDs to shine through the headlight or shine down into the cab. The model will have a separate independent cab light that I'll install later. I'll need to create a light box that will both hold the LEDs that will light up the number boards, prevent those LEDs from lighting up anything else, and to keep other light out of the number boards. To figure out the dimensions of my light box, I'll start by measuring the width of the flat part of the cab roof, which is slightly over 6 HO scale feet. The cab is slightly over 6 HO scale feet long. That'll be the maximum length for the light box. Next, I'll measure the width of the number boards. Notice that I'm not measuring them diagonally. I'm keeping the ruler squared of the locomotive. Each one is about two and a half scale feet. Now I'll measure the depth of the number board area inside the cab. It's really difficult to get a ruler in there, much less read it. I'm going to try an idea using a pair of styrene strips. The size doesn't matter, they just have to be small enough to fit inside the cab. With the engine upside down, I'll put one strip in until it touches the cab roof. Then I'll slide the next one down until it's even with the bottom of the number board area. Keeping them firmly pinched in my fingers so that nothing moves, I can remove them and measure them outside the model. It's about one and three quarter scale feet. Since the model has a cannon cab, an alternate method is to measure the same area on a surplus cannon cab front from my scrap box. The measurement is the same, about one and three quarter scale feet. I'll be using 040 styrene sheet to construct the light box. To keep things under one and three quarter scale feet tall, I'm going to start by cutting a one and one quarter scale foot strip for the sides of the box. This will allow space for a lid. I'll mark the one and one quarter foot dimension with my X-Acto knife in two places. Then I'll use my ruler as a straight edge and score the styrene. After a few passes, I can break the styrene along the cut line. I now have my one and one quarter foot strip. I'll use the same technique to cut a six scale foot wide piece for the lid. Earlier I determined that I could make the light box up to six scale feet in length front to back, but it doesn't actually need to be that long. I'm going to cut mine down to four scale feet. That's long enough to set the LEDs back from the number boards a little, but short enough to make it easier to install. I'll also cut four four scale foot pieces from the strip that I made for the sides of the box. If you recall, I measured the number boards were about two and a half scale feet wide. I'll measure two and a half feet from the end of my lid and make a mark with a pencil. I'll use some liquid styrene cement to glue two of the strips along these marks. Then I'll glue the other two strips to the outside edges of the lid. Now I have a piece that looks like this. The area in the center is a channel for the headlight fiber optic strands to pass through. After cutting two more pieces of the strip to fill in the back end, the light box now looks like this. This part isn't going to be visible when the model is finished, but I'm going to give it a light sanding anyway just to true up the edges. I'll paint the inside surfaces with some flat black paint to help prevent light leaks. After the paint is dry, I'll sand the top of the light box to get paint off the surfaces that will need to be glued later. I'm using a number 76 drill bit to make four small holes in the back of the light box, two on each side. These are for the LED wires. These are 603 warm white surface mount LEDs with 36 gauge magnet wire leads. I made up a set of these in episode 8 of the Consys build for this engine. If you want to see how I did it, please refer back to model building HOSP Consist part 8. I'm threading the leads from the LEDs through the holes in the back of the light box. Small pliers or tweezers can be useful to position the LEDs. They should face forward. To hold the LEDs in place, I cut short lengths of the styrene strip I made for the box sides. I'll glue these in back over the wires. 
With magnet wire I use green as the positive common. I'm going to twist the two green wires together. Now I can solder them and snip off the excess wire. I don't want the number boards to be too bright, so I'm using a pair of 3.3k ohm 1 8 watt resistors. I've twisted them together on one side. Polarity doesn't matter. Next I'll cut a couple short lengths of 1 16th diameter heat shrink tubing. I've cut the red wire shorter and slipped a piece of heat shrink tubing over each one. Now I can tin the ends. I'll solder one red wire to each of the free resistor leads. After moving the heat shrink tubing up over the solder joint, I'll use the shaft of the soldering iron tip to heat it up and shrink it. This will help to insulate the connections. Let's test it one more time. Looks good. As some extra insurance against light leaks and to keep the light box from being visible through the cab windows, I'm going to paint the outside black. Sorry that the black on black makes this a little hard to see. I'm installing the light box in the cab roof. I'll secure it with some liquid styrene cement. And for insurance, I'll also use a little canopy glue. This looks a little sloppy, I know, but no one will ever see this once the model is together. The fiber optics for the headlight run right through the center channel that I built into the light box. With the tester hooked up, the number boards have a nice soft glow, exactly what I was after. Most of the time, a single 603 LED, the same type I used for the number boards, is sufficient for a cab light. This is a different model that I built that has a 603 LED as a cab light. I want to mount the light somewhere in the cab roof so that it provides a glow but doesn't show through the cab windows at most viewing angles. I don't want the headlight fiber optics to cast a shadow, so I want to build something that will locate the light below that. It looks like I could use some material a little shorter than the strips I cut to make the light box sides for the number board lights. Since the extra strip material is surplus now anyway, I'll cut some small squares from it. I'll laminate three of these squares together with liquid styrene cement to make a block. Next I'll cut a piece of the strip material 5 scale feet long. The exact measurement doesn't really matter, but it has to be less than 6 scale feet so that it will fit inside the flat part of the cab roof. I'll glue the block to one end. With another block on the opposite end, I've made something that looks kind of like a bench. The overall height is about the same as the strip material, which is the same as the sides of the number board light box minus the lid. Everything looks good so far as I'm test fitting the part that I made. It fits in behind the number board light box and has enough clearance to span the headlight fiber optics. Now I'll drill a pair of holes in the middle of the part. Just like I did with the number board light box, I've threaded the leads from an LED through the holes. I've positioned the LED so that it will point down toward the cab floor. I wrap the leads around the part a couple times to help hold everything in place. They're not super tight. For a little extra insurance, I'll put a couple small drops of CA glue on the LED using a piece of scrap wire as an applicator. To keep the part from being too visible, I'll put some black paint on the sides. I'm leaving the center white on purpose to help reflect the light from the LED down into the cab. Just like I did with the number board LEDs, I clipped the leads shorter and soldered a resistor on the red wire. This time I used a 2K ohm. I've glued the cab light support into the cab roof just behind the number board light box. Next time I might consider making the number board light box and the cab light support one assembly. Also I've ganged the green wires from the cab light and the number boards together and soldered them to a single blue wire. Sorry for not showing my work here but it's getting crowded inside the shell and I'm not quite sure how to film that in a way that would let you see anything. This is what the cab light looks like right now hooked up to the tester. After seeing working ground lights on some commercial models, I thought it would be neat to add them to this model. Doing this involves adding detail parts for the lights and more 603 LEDs. I'll be using two of the light castings from Detail's West Part Set 172. The label says step lights, but they look the same as the ground lights in photos I have of Conrail 6283. These lights have cast on mounting pins, so I'll need to drill a pair of mounting holes. Conrail 6283's ground lights were located under the sill on both sides of the locomotive. As best I can determine, the lights were about two feet back from the front of the cab. With my scale rule, a piece of scrap plastic, and a pencil, I'll mark a line where the light needs to go. Since there are two lights, I put lines on both sides of the sill. I'm using a number 58 drill bit and my motor tool at a low RPM to drill holes as close to the inside edges of the sill as I can get them. The cab sub base is over this area, so if I go through the sill, it's okay. Before I install the light castings, I'll need to paint them. They appear to be black in photos I have of Conrail SD40s. Since they're so small, I'll hold each casting with some sprung tweezers and brush them with some flat black paint. Now I can insert them into the holes that I drilled. Uh-oh. It fits fine, but the light casting doesn't stick down far enough. I'll need to make some kind of a spacer. While thinking about the spacer, I also started thinking about trying to control the light coming from the LEDs. 
I think it would look better if they were contained in something so that most of the light goes straight down, just like real ground lights. This is what I came up with. It's a piece of O40 styrene with two holes in it. The smaller hole for the light casting mounting pin was drilled with the same number 58 drill bit I used earlier. The larger hole for the LED was done with the number 56. I'm going to use a 1 16th drill bit to countersink the larger hole, drilling part way but not all the way through the part. Then I'll use a file to make a notch on the same side for wires. The LED will fit into the countersunk side of the hole, and the wires will go through the notch that I filed. Before I put it all together, I stuck the parts with the notch side down on some masking tape so that I can paint them black. With the black paint and the LED installed, it looks like it's doing what I wanted. The light is bright through the hole but blocked to the sides. The mounting pin and the ground light detail part fits through the other hole. I'll secure it with a tiny drop of CA. I'll put the light assembly in place and secure it with some liquid styrene cement. Now both light assemblies are mounted on the shell. I'm going to leave the wires loose for now. Next I'll test fit the chassis. I've removed the front truck to make it easier to see what's going on. It looks like I'll need to remove a little material on both sides to clear the ground light mounts. I'll start with a fiber reinforced cutting wheel in my motor tool. It doesn't need to be pretty, but I'll clean up the notches with a file. This is looking good. It's a tight fit, but the frame is now clearing the light mounts. The last step is to hook the lights up to the tester and make sure everything still works. It's hard to see in this shot, but the light is projecting downward just like it should. I think that's a good place to leave things for now. Conrail 6283 now has LEDs or fiber optics installed for everything that needs to light up. Sometimes getting a direct measurement, like the depth of the number board area inside the cab, can be difficult. Finding a substitute method, like using a pair of styrene strips, can be useful in situations like this. Sometimes even though something works fine, the design can be improved for the next model. The separate number board light box and cab light support are an example. Next time I might try to combine these into a single part to make installation a little easier. Having to use a spacer to get the ground light casting at the right height provided an opportunity to devise a better light mount for the ground light LEDs. I like how the light now shines down and not out to the sides, making it look more like the light is coming from the light casting itself. I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made on the Conrail unit so far. In the next episode, I'm going to work on adding a cab interior. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.